It is a cold, frigid day here in New York City, but it is also beautiful and snowy and amazing. So, you know, gotta limit the complaints about the cold. Today we are gonna discuss how not to get taken advantage of in a professional setting. I'm hoping to get through this video without falling because the snow is roughly six inches deep under my feet as I walk and I'm staring into a camera instead of where I'm going. So if I fall, you guys get to laugh at me. You gotta keep watching to see if that happens. I hope it doesn't. Ah! Oh, I'm really sinking in the snow. All right, so uh, in a professional setting, the most common way people get taken advantage of is usually to do with scope creep, meaning that they were assigned a task and all of a sudden that task grew after, but their salary or their schedule to do it didn't grow with it. Meaning, you are told you have to work from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. each day for your fixed salary. You don't get paid overtime. And yet, one day your boss says, we, need, we have a deadline coming up tomorrow. You've got to get this done today. And you end up staying instead of till 6, till 8, two more hours of work that day. You don't get paid for that work. What do you do? Because if you just eat it and, and accept it and show up to work the next day normally, well, humans are creatures of habit. That's gonna repeat itself and you're gonna have a supervisor who's gonna do that to you all the time. Because why not? It's free labor for them. They don't care. They're not worried about that you got something to go home to. They're happy to get the extra free hours of work. What can you do about that to prevent that from recurring? Very easy, actually. You simply say to your supervisor at 8 p.m. when you're finally done and ready to go home, it's 8 p.m., two hours since I was supposed to be home. Um, I'll see you tomorrow at 11 a.m. because you're normally supposed to be there at 9, two hours late. If they just say, okay, this works, that's okay, no problems. If they say, no, 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 you gotta be here at 9, then you tell them very simply, then I'm gonna be leaving tomorrow, two hours early, I'll go make something up with my wife, my kids, my whatever, um, you know, we're gonna do a party at four o'clock in that case, <laughs> something happens. Basically, you wanna recover those hours if you're not getting paid overtime. It's really important to do that to make sure that you have the boundaries set correctly so that doesn't keep happening. Oh my God, this is so cute, you gotta see this thing. <laughs> That's adorable. All right, you, by setting those boundaries, you ensure that your boss knows there's a cost to keeping you. It's not free. Now, sometimes people are just at the beginning of their career and they kind of are willing to put in that extra effort and don't mind losing a little bit of lifetime for no pay because they, they don't have an alternative or your job is so important and critical to you financially you're afraid to lose it. In those situations, you kind of have no choice. You're better off not being in those situations. Figure out ways to make employment arrangements where you are paid overtime. If they keep you overtime, they give you extra bonus money, then it's okay. Now, if that happens on a regular basis, okay, that you keep getting held overtime and, and you're not getting paid, you gotta figure it out. Figure out if it's worth your while to stay in that role. Maybe it's time for another job. Now, I have a great scenario of something that's happened to me so many times, but this is one story that's happened to me probably 10 times at least in my life, if not more. All right? I sold a bunch of older computers. Whoa, <laughs> I just fell in a snow, snow hole. <laughs> See, I gotta keep watching. Maybe I'll fall. Maybe you get a good laugh out of this. All right, so I sold a bunch of old computers to somebody who bought them after negotiating really hard down. I'm usually pretty rough about this, but I know these computers have like really, are really hard to move because they're old and nobody wants them. This guy wanted to take them all. So I sold it to the guy. Calls me up the very next day, okay, after getting this killer deal for the computers and goes, can you come over and install them all and assemble them all, hook them up, make sure they're working? I said, oh, hell no. <laughs> Not in those words, of course. But I knew right away what that meant. I ha said no, by the way. But uh, what, what I knew that meant is if I come today to help him install this stuff, which sounds benign, tomorrow when he has a problem, he's going to call me and ask for free warrantied service on him. 
he's going to want me to come fix him if it breaks six months down the, lot, the road. And he just doesn't intend to pay for that. Now, I said no because I knew this guy has no budget to make it worth my while. If he did, or if I thought he did, I wouldn't have said no. I would have made it worth my while. I would have been clicking in my head the buttons, the calculator buttons, and figure out how much money I got to charge this guy to make it worth my while. Meaning, I wouldn't just show up the next day and install his computers. I'd say, that's fine. My hourly rate is X dollars an hour. I figured this would take me about three hours to do. He can either say yes or no at that point because I just set the ultimatum. The ultimatum is if you want me to install it, you got to pay for that time and this is the amount to pay. He will probably react with, oh my God, so much money or can't you do it for free? In which case he say, no, <laughs> just flat out no. Now, also you have to understand how to estimate your time wisely and how to estimate the value of your time wisely. If you get a, raw, a job and you underestimate your time, how long it's going to take you, you could end up in a conflict with the person paying you. So it's important to recognize how much money you're, you're, you're going to need for that effort, A to Z. On the flip side, when I get from a contractor for an estimate for work and I know there's no way in the world this guy's going to be able to complete the work in the time estimate they gave or the budget is so much lower than it probably needs to be. I have two thoughts that go through my head. One, jackpot. And two, what happens if he doesn't deliver? Because it's highly likely that person won't deliver. Now, so you got to take those two parts and join them together. Number one, you set a contract arrangement that if they don't deliver according to the terms that they set forth, meaning the timing, the schedule, and the money. If they can't deliver, and you said also a third one, the quality of service, meaning that if you ordered, uh, let's say a new computer, he can't give you a used computer or he can't give you a computer that's problematic, it's got to be working. Yeah, that's a really bad example, but you're setting the level of standard to uh, acknowledge that the order was delivered. So if it's an electrician, 20 working electric sockets around three rooms. Okay, and they have to work and they can't fall out of the wall, you know? All right, so that's, that's the general idea. Now, once you set those terms, you set them in such a way that if they don't meet them, there is a penalty for the contractor. And to counterbalance that, I usually give also a bonus if they do meet it, because I don't believe they will. And if they do, God bless them, they deserve it. But I don't think they will, and usually they don't. Honestly, and they usually end up getting the uh, penalty. But the, the thing is, the penalty part is a little challenging. So it's like, if they say they can do this job in one week, and you know it takes three weeks, so there's no way they're keeping that. You give them a bonus, an extra 20% if they could do it on time, and they lose 20% if they get it uh, after, the, after the one week. Now, what happens if that one week becomes five weeks? Because it's a three week job, and they already, you, know, you know they already can't estimate. What if they're also slow? You have to account for that too. So generally you set those penalties on a sliding scale. Something like uh, every week it goes down by a certain percentage, so they want to deliver. But you also have to be aware, wow, check this dude out. <laughs> you also have to be aware that at some point the penalty stops mattering because they're gonna, you're gonna run out of funds and they're not gonna wanna do the job and they'll abandon, which is also bad because it leaves you high and dry after you waited for that time. So you kind of all have to figure that out when you set the contract agreement. That's just something to do. But when you get someone who underestimates a contract by a large margin, at least based on what you believe is safe, uh, safe estimation, you gotta just be aware. Be aware that you don't have to believe what they wrote as, as likely to be accurate and you can profit off of that because they just underestimated how much it's going to cost. Okay. Um, so that's basically the idea. All right. You always want to have a clear... <laughs> I just walked into a snowball fight. Hold on. Ah, so bad. Um, you always want to have... Ooh, I'm going to get hit right here. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Um, is this on YouTube? Yeah, it is. Oh, okay. I think <laughs> yeah, of course. Go for Hello. it. Hey. Hello. <laughs> if you are afraid of asking for that extra money for your time, you don't be. 
because you always have to ask yourself, what is the worst that can happen? Now, you have to be smart. You don't ask for that when you are desperate for cash and you can't afford to lose a job. So I'm not saying do it in every scenario, but if you have the flexibility to either be uh, cons be going out and getting another job or you have financial stability and you don't really want to be taken advantage of and you can afford it always 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 either say no when you're taken advantage of or don't say no and make it worth your while which is the better one give that price to make it worth your while to do whatever they're asking when they're trying to get a freebie always ask what's the worst that can happen in this situation the worst is you probably lose your client lose your job or whatever like that but usually that doesn't happen. Usually people are open to negotiation. And when they're open to negotiation, there's room to negotiate. Therefore, make it worth your while. Don't get... Wow. Oh, jeez. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> make it worth your while. Don't be a sucker. Okay? Because when you show that you are firm on the values of your time and that you're not ready to be ripped off for your time and taken advantage of, people usually respect that. They usually respect the strength of your authority. Now, if you're just starting out your career, you may not have that authority and that's okay. Let people take advantage of you because they're going to love you for it if you're comfortable doing that. But if you're experienced in your career and you're, re you're ready to give up a client who's probably not going to pay you more, Meaning when they start doing these freebie business, they're, you, it's probably a losing proposition financially for you anyway. You're not, it's not really a great client. So as long as you're ready to walk from that client, never accept it without making it worth your while or just flat out say no. Thank you all from the frigid, cold, but beautiful New York City in the snow. See you all in the next video. Please subscribe, like, and share this video. And I didn't fall. I just noticed that. I made it through the whole video with it with tripping a little but never falling. All right, like, subscribe. See you in the next video. And don't let nobody take your advantage of you. For like five Did you years catch ago. her tripping? I think so. Oh. I definitely caught her after she fell uh, flat oh. down. The question is, yeah. did it catch you on camera? I wonder if I watch her back to put it. Okay. <laughs> 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 yeah.